back in the garage, back back in the garage, in the garage, in the garage, back in the garage today, back in the garage, back in the garage today. Back in the garage. <laughs> oh my god. Back in the garage. What's up guys, back in the garage today. As many of you know, I have a Rottweiler Stage 3 air intake on my KTM 1290 Super Adventure. I recently returned from a 9,600 mile trip from West Virginia to Alaska and back. So today, we're gonna get into the air intake, see how it held up under pretty dusty and dirty conditions, and then I'll show you how to service it. Besides, it's raining out today anyway, so uh, might as well work on the bike. Now in order to access the air intake or air box, it is underneath the fuel tank, meaning I need to remove the fuel tank. Now I've already done a video or two on this. I'm going to link up here in the corner, so check that out if you don't know how to do it. Uh, we're just going to show you a quick time lapse and then come back and see how it held up. Now I know some of you are gonna look at all these parts laying on the ground and then look over here at my bike and go, holy crap, you had to do all that to get to the air intake. To be honest, I've gotten this process down to like 15 minutes now. It's really not that hard to do. It's really not, it's not hard. And the first time it probably took me an hour and a half. And like I said, now it's 15 minutes and I can have it down to the uh, gas tank all the way off the bike. So if we take a look at the pre-filter on here right now, I gotta get some gloves on because I don't really wanna to touch this. I was expecting there to be way more debris up front here. There's really not that much. The pre-filter is coming gray and red. I had the red one on, um, but I had a clean gray one that I wanted to go ahead and treat and put on instead of letting the other one dry out. This one's also kind of made a little bit more for off-road use. Uh, the filter's a little bit better than the red filter, but we're gonna pull this off, get down to the actual filter and air box, and then we're gonna pop that off. All right, so I've got my rubber gloves on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and unplug this seat so I get a little bit more space here. There we go, just get that back out of the way. This stuff gets really sticky because it is oiled. We're going to pop it off. <laughs> I got to tell you, this damn thing still looks like brand new. Uh, this thing definitely needs cleaned. You can see there is some uh, dirt and muck and stuff on here. But if you look at the inside of it, it's perfectly clean. Nothing got through. I have a feeling the inside of the air box is gonna look the same way. All right, so in order to pop this filter off, actually I didn't even need a screwdriver. There's just two uh, twist pins on here. Pop out of place. And then it's got a little, it's not a hinge, it's just a clip over on this side. Yeah, boys, it don't get much cleaner than that. I'll give you a, uh, a close up here, but <laughs> Does this thing even need cleaned? I mean, jeez. All right, so I'm gonna use my iPhone flashlight because my other flashlight batteries are dead. There is a look at the air intake. It does not get much cleaner than that. This thing did its job and filtered the air and kept everything clean. So uh, let's go ahead and do our job, get these bad boys cleaned up and then re-oiled and back on the bike. All right, so Rottweiler actually recommends using no toil filter cleaner and filter oil. You can use whatever you want. Now I did use no toil, so if you're gonna use their oil, you need to use their filter cleaner or you will not get your filter clean. So I'm gonna show you how to use this stuff and how to clean up the pre-filter and the filter itself. Now in addition to no toil cleaner, you're also gonna need some dishwashing soap and you'll see what that's for here in a minute. Go ahead and get a bucket or fill your sink up with, I don't know, three, four, or five inches of water, something like that, and then I'll show you what's up next. All right, so with your water filled up, now you're gonna take a quarter cup of the cleaning solution Mix that in to the water because this is going to be what cleans up your filter. Now my recommendation would be whatever the cleanest of the two is, which I'm going to guess is always going to be this one. This is the one you want to clean first. You want to submerge it in. You want to make sure you get the cleaning solution all into the foam. And then once we do that, we're going to let it sit for about two, three minutes. And then we're going to come back, maybe clean it one more time, and then I'll show you the next step. Basically what this cleaning solution is doing is breaking down all the oil in it, all the stickiness in it, and all the, you know, hopefully getting out most of the dirt particles, which it didn't look like this thing had much to begin with. All 
All right, so the filter's been sitting in the cleaning solution for about three, two to three minutes. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna massage the stuff in just a little bit more, and then we're gonna pull it out of the cleaning solution because the next thing we're gonna do is clean up the pre-filter. Now, I've only ever cleaned the pre-filter before. Like I said, last time I used a bucket. This time, since we had to use a sink for this, I don't have a bucket quite wide enough to fit the regular filter. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna massage all the cleaning solution in here. We're gonna let it sit for two to three minutes. Then we're gonna come back if it needs a little further massaging in. We'll do that, and then we'll uh, move on to the next step. Now, because there was so much nastiness in this sink that got washed out, I went ahead and cleaned the sink up real good. Now we're gonna fill it back up with, uh, water and we want to put a liberal amount of soap in here just make sure you are filling it with warm water that is important for the step all right so next up once again i'm going to start with the main filter itself and you'll see it kind of rise up out of here and you know the oil and grease and stuff or the grease and dirt and what's left in here of the cleaner kind of rise up out of there and Basically, we just want to get the damn thing clean. If you spend more than four or five minutes doing this, you're probably doing it wrong. And with as clean as this one is, it shouldn't even take that long. When you get done with your main filter, now you're gonna do your pre-filter, same deal. Now our final step, we're gonna drain all the soapy water out of here and then we're going to rinse both the filter and the pre-filter to get all the soap out of it. And then we're gonna have to let these things dry out. Now the pre-filter, I've already got most of the soap out of. This one's pretty easy. I have a feeling the filter itself will be a little bit more difficult since it's made into that frame. You can squeeze it, you can squeeze the water out, do not wring it. You take the chance of tearing the filter if you wring it. And the next step, though it's the easiest step, is also probably the longest step. We need to let these bad boys dry out, and then once they're dry, we can retreat them with oil and get them back on the bike. All right, so my actual filter is almost dry. I've been filming a bunch of back in the garage videos, but I'm gonna go ahead and oil the red pre-filter. I'm gonna use this one. I made the determination a while ago I was gonna flip flop back and forth between the two. I'd run the red pre-filter till it got dirty, clean it, and then put the gray one on and go back and forth that way. You know, I get a lot of life out of them. It's got a couple discoloration marks from where the tank rubbed against it, but this thing was cleaned up, I don't know, about a month or so ago. So I'm gonna grab my no-toil oil and start uh, lubing this thing back up. So the first thing you wanna do is shake this bad boy up, but make sure you got some gloves on because this stuff gets really nasty and you don't want it all over your skin. Plus it's just sticky as can be. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna spray in a circular motion until these outer pores start to fill up with oil. And then once we feel like we've got enough on there, we're just gonna kind of massage it in. We want enough to help with filtration, but we don't want too much that it becomes overly saturated. So it's kind of a fine point in there that we need to find. So it might be tough on camera to see, but I can see the outer pores starting to fill up with oil, so we've probably got enough on there. Now, again, keep your, keep your gloves on, and what you wanna do is you just wanna go around and get that oil massaged down into the pre-filter. All right, now we've got the pre-filter oiled up. Next thing we wanna do is wait for the actual filter to finish drying out. And that's another reason I'm flip-flopping back and forth. I don't have to wait as long. So there are gonna be times where you probably don't need to clean your filter, you just need to clean your pre-filter. So if you already have a spare, all you gotta do is oil it up and slap it on the bike and you're ready to put your bike back together. Where if you have to wait for it to dry out, well, it's just gonna take more time. 
So I like to use a screwdriver to snap these back into place. You don't have to worry about over tightening them or anything because basically once they click into place, they're in and just fold those tabs over. It doesn't really matter if you want the R on the back or the front. It's all aesthetics. The filter's the same on both ends. Just pull the pre-filter back down nice and snug over top of the filter. And then you get the uh, fun job of reassembling the bike. So anyway guys, I got the bike back together. Everything is ready to go. Uh, we've got the air filter service. We learned today that this thing does a pretty damn good job of filtering air as we can see from the inside of the uh, air box there. So um, a little bit of a time consuming job because you got to take half the damn bike apart, which, you know, I've, like I said, I've gotten pretty quick at. That said, your biggest amount of time is going to be letting that filter dry out once you've cleaned it, then get it re-oiled back in the bike. So. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button because if you like motorcycles, this is the place to be. If you have any questions about the Rottweiler uh, air intake or how to service it or anything that we went over in today's video, let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.